going to be showing you today how to use the Ultimate Boot CD along with an external hard drive to recover the files off of a damaged or non-booting Windows system. Uh, it could be not booting for a multitude of reasons, you know, you have a virus on it, a corrupt file system, uh, things of that sort. Or you could be just ready to move to a, another computer, but the hard drive that you have, uh, let's say in your system a old IDE hard drive, uh, you don't have a connector in your new system for an IDE drive, so what you can do is boot up off the Ultimate Boot CD on the working computer and start recovering your files. Uh, requirements that you're going to have to have for this is an Ultimate Boot CD. You can go ahead, pause and click on the CD there to go see the video on how to make one of these. You have to have this before you start by the way, if you haven't figured that out. The external hard drive yourself, uh, itself, you can pick one of these up pretty much anywhere. Best Buy, Circuit City, online. Um, they're pretty cheap. You know, a little external one like this, a little portable external or one of the huge ones. Uh, the USB cables go along with that. And you also want to go in and set up your system on how to boot up off of a CD. I've got a video already on that. So if you do not know how to do that, go ahead and check that out. Click on the computer, it'll go to that video. So let's go ahead and put our CD in. And I'm going to go ahead and tell it to boot up off the CD. And what it's going to do is give us a little menu here. Ask us what do we want to do uh, with the Ultimate Boot CD. It'll take a little bit. CDs aren't the fastest technology in the world. And we want to go ahead and launch the Ultimate Boot CD for Windows. And I'm going to save you pretty much the waiting here because it does take quite a while for it to boot up depending on RAM and processor speed and CD-ROM, all that stuff. Screen here, you should see each drive you got listed. The color scheme they got does not cooperate with the camera. If I get a little bit closer, here we go. You can see it better. You can see the size of each drive you got, your total amount of RAM. Uh, the B drive there, that's going to be a temporary uh, RAM drive. C drive is going to usually be your internal hard drive. D drive might be another one you've got installed. And X is always going to be the actual CD. Uh, ultimate boot CD itself. So that's why you see there's no free space and there's uh, only 600 some odd megs. But if you don't see a C or a D drive, uh, you want to go back into your BIOS, make sure you don't have it set up to be in like a RAID configuration. Uh, just like I said on my Windows XP downgrade video, you have to have uh, your system set to basically not be a RAID or uh, otherwise odd setting for your hard drive controller unless you're going to get the uh, disks, the driver disks for Windows itself to be able to start up off of it. Same thing applies to the Ultimate Boot CD. So once you go through you get that. We just need to hook up our hard drive. Just a matter of taking USB cables and plugging them into your USB port. We got our drive connected I can't see the light but it is on all that good stuff and back over here on our ultimate boot CD we're going to go ahead and open up you can choose to do either the Windows Explorer or I like to use this little um, oh, what's the stupid name of this program XFinder or something like that it's a little folder with like a grayish colored X on it uh, it has a 2. It's very hard to make out what the heck that thing's supposed to be, but um, that's what that icon is. Explorer 2, that's what they call it. And if you're lucky, your drive will automatically show up in your system under your uh, drive listing here, which in this case it didn't. 
So what we need to do is basically tell the Ultimate Boot CD to check for devices. So we hit the Start menu, we go to System, we go to Hardware, Plug and Play, HWPNP, and then we can do a Force Install USB. And what this is going to do is basically scan for new USB devices and install them. And after that's done, you should see a little icon down here. It says safely remove hardware. You should see your drive being listed. Safely remove USB 2.0 hard drive. Try refreshing this screen. And you can do that by going up to the file menu. Or sorry, it must be under view. And then refresh. And as you can see, we still do not see our drive. That way, that's shorter. Right click on the My Computer icon on the desktop. And you want to go to Manage. And then the option we want to choose in here is going to be the Disk Manager. Because what's happened is Windows has detected your drive, but it hasn't assigned it a drive letter. So we need to just go ahead and do that. So under Disk Management, saying it's connecting to it. See the apricorn there? That is our drive. And if we go down here, we'll see our apricorn listed. It's healthy, but we have no drive letter. So we just want to right click on it, change drive letter and paths. You can allow access by adding, yada yada yada. We'll assign it volume E. Hit OK. And now you see we have the drive letter E there. And it says drive letter E there. So we can just minimize this. Go back to Explorer 2. Do a refresh. Oops. I was hoping maybe I could do it with the keyboard, but looks like I won't be able to. And there's our E drive. So now, now is the easy part of just simply basically doing a copy and paste. You can go under your C drive, just double click on it, and this is going to be the contents of your entire hard drive here. The great thing I like about this Explorer 2 program is it doesn't hide system files, so you can see everything here. So if you want to do the paranoid thing, which would be basically edit, select all, and then copy, uh, you can do that, or if you want to do uh, the more targeted approach, you want to make sure you get your Documents and Settings folder, and you also want to um, check for any odd directories you might have put in here, um, as far as, like, I see there's a couple odd folders here, Shepard for this guy, and you basically just copy. Go over to your external drive. And paste. And that's it. I'm not going to bore you with that copy menu, but that's all it takes. Um, once your copy is done, just shut down the uh, Ultimate Boot CD by going to Start and then Shut Down and you can safely remove your drive that way and that's really it um, some of you might be going great I can use this to copy my programs uh, no uh, programs don't really work when you copy them uh, between computers yes you can copy the files themselves physically you know the same way I just showed you there doing a copy and paste but the thing is once you copy them back onto your computer you're going to try and run them and you're going to get an error message errors like you know you need to register this program or file missing things of that sort nowadays when programs install like let's say Microsoft Office they will put files into the Windows system directory they will 
go through and put in registry entries to basically say the product's been activated, all that stuff. So doing a simple copy and paste for a program isn't going to cut it. Um, only really old programs will be successful with that or a program that's designed to work that way. So I hope this video was useful to you. If you got any questions on it, just give me a shout. Uh, post a comment below or uh, send me an email at video at the knock dot yeah, <laughs> sorry video at defcon dash five dot com or the website www.thenock.tv. Uh, you try getting some of this stuff straight up for you've been talking as long as I have. So till next time I'll see you later.